Uh, he's excused. Ms. Carlebaugh. Present. Mr. Giancarlo. Here. Mrs. Grover. Here. Mr. Hernandez. Here. Mr. Nicole. Here. Mrs. Rose. Here. Mr. Robley. Here. Mrs. Souls. Here. One point two Pledge of Allegiance will be led by student athletes from the boys swim team. Just to give you a brief background of uh, our season this year, uh, I had 11 kids on the team this year. We went nine and two on our season, uh, six and one on our league. Our, our league is the Central New York City League, and it's split into two different sections. It's split into the National and the American. Uh, we are in the American League, and we went undefeated in our American League, so we were CNYCL champions in our American League. Um, we placed uh, fifth overall at our Section 3 championship meet, and I was able to qualify two of my kids for the state meet in, um, in Webster, New York this year. So that's just a brief background. Oh, and our, our team uh, got the Scholar Athlete Team Award this year also. It takes 11 kids from the team, which is all I had, <laughs> and you take two, two, the last two marking periods of the period, and they have to score 90 or above with all their averages, and so we were able to uh, get that also this year. Okay. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you go, we have a big fan of souvenirs here. Uh, we just have a, a pin. Some of you, some of you, uh, uh, may recall receiving one of these last year. I think uh, you did the. Uh, yeah, Nick and Colin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if if you have two, you know, uh, just what we'd like you to do is just when I give you the pin, just say hello to the camera, what your uh, name is, and uh, you can tell us a little bit about what you're swimming and what grade you're in. Okay. Me. Uh, my name is Nick Riddell. I'm a senior and. I'd swim the Hunter Butterfly. Where are you going next year, Nick? Yale. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom Mitchell, and I swim 50 freestyle and 100 back. And I'm undecided. I'm where I'm going. I'm a senior. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm Nick Gavris. I'm a freshman, and I swim the 50 free. I'm Jake Whiting. I'm a freshman, and I swim the 500 yard freestyle. I'm Tyler Mason, I'm a sophomore, and I swim the 200 freestyle. Hi, I'm Patrick Kinn. I swim the 500 yard freestyle, and I'm a sophomore this year. I'm Nate Lupo. I'm a freshman, I swim the 200 IM. I'm Neil Boker. I swim the 50 free and the 100 back. Great. I'm a sophomore. Okay. And our coach? Coach? Coach. You uh, get one too. <laughs> Go to the boys uh, varsity swim team. I work over at the Cuyahoga and Dagobosis, uh special ed department. I've uh, been there 20. This is my 26th year, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good season next year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Move by Andy. Is it Andy? Sam. 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 I'm sorry. Sam. Seconded by Amanda. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Carried. Three point zero minutes of previous meeting. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Move by Andy. Sam. Seconded by Andy. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? I'm going to yeah. abstain because I wasn't present. Yeah. You're going to abstain? Me too. Okay. And you're going to abstain too. Okay, so six ayes, two abstain, one absent. Okay, thank you. 4.0, superintendent's reports. 4.1, update from student representatives, Jordan Levinson and Elena Slayton. Good evening, Jordan. Good evening, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. 
Um, well, first off, I just want to congratulate all the teams that participated in the states these past weekends. Uh, swimming, like we just heard, bowling placed the girls team placed third, <coughs> then hockey they made it to the state semifinals, and um, tryouts started this week for mm -hmm. spring sports. And they're still going on for most of them. And then, uh, lastly, I just want to mention again that the junior class is holding a pasta dinner at the Knights of Columbus on the 19th. Yeah, from five to seven, uh, to benefit our fundraising for prom and other events for next year as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Were you at the hockey game? No, I had to babysit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the hockey game. It was great. They played a great game. Thank you. 4.2, update on. Sorry. What night is the pasta dinner? March 19th, it's a Wednesday. Okay. From five to seven. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. I have a flyer here if you want one. Four point two update on the twenty fourteen fifteen BOCES budget. Mr. William Speck, you got it the BOCES district superintendent. If you believe the BOCES district superintendent to manage Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come and share a tremendous amount of work. I'd like to begin by first of all recognizing your board member on the BOCES board, and that's Mr. Bill Andre. He's been a phenomenal support to us. I think a real, true uh, believer and someone who understands the importance of all the work that we do there. And unfortunately, I know he could not be here today to uh, loss of a family member, but please, I'd like uh, to recognize him this evening. He's a, he's a tremendous asset. Um, you do have the budget packet in front of you, and on the front of that cover, you'll see a vision statement. Our board had the pleasure and ability to work a couple nights uh, in the fall and get to know each other a little bit and set the course and um, I think really put a few words of action uh, in that vision statement that have been a wonderful guide to us as we have had to work through a very turbulent budget season as you well know what you're going through too. And those words have truly been guiding us through some difficult times. I'd like to thank Connie for the time spent with the superintendents in a number of reviews of these budgets. So the budgets that you see here tonight were not fashioned or formed uh, yesterday. They started in a process before Christmas. Mr. Gucci will talk about our teaming effort. They're very complex because they're woven not only amongst each other in the book, but they web out to nine different school districts. So with that, I'm going to ask Peter to walk us through the budgets. I'm going to hop back in when we talk about the new program, our alternative education program that will be established coming back on the campus. So again, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, obviously, we have to go through on an annual basis the same, uh, um, not only tiring, but sometimes upsetting process of looking at the budget and making some tough choices as to what we can live with and what we can't live without. And um, uh, we do that on a daily basis at both season. Our team, uh, fortunately, works hard, takes uh, the, the pieces of our program seriously and puts it together in the most efficient and cost-effective ways they possibly can to make sure that we take real good care of your kids and all kids in the region as we move forward. The key to BOCES is it's about opportunity and it's about the future. And obviously there's things you have to do today to make it more secure. As we start to walk through this budget book, uh, the whole concept that we've put together for you is a way to give you a summary along with some detail behind it so that you have an opportunity to look at it in depth if you, if you choose to okay and ask the questions that you think you need answered um, I don't want to belabor the point or the evening uh, by making it any longer than possible however we are open to uh, uh, questions as we move forward and uh, if I don't hear a question I'm just gonna pounce right through it you know kid from downstate that's how it works the first thing we do is if you turn into it turn to the budget there's one that says administrative and capital budget um, proposal summary we package our administrative budget and our capital budget together because basically those are budgets that are imposed on our component districts based on what we put together in terms of what our needs are to run the entire organization okay it's our administration it's our board it's our cost of doing business it includes in it you know things like insurance 
and uh, renting space for, for different programs in different districts. So we try to package it together. The administrative budget is something that each board votes on. It's really the, the only other vote that, that districts have is really whether or not they want to participate in a program or not, and they should only do it if it's in the best interest of their kids and their school district and their community. So we believe that this is the key. This one we go over with in depth at the party. You know, we have the party where everybody comes and we have dinner and we celebrate kids and we celebrate our organization and our commitment to each other. We go over the administrative budget, and the rest of it is up, for, up to you to watch, look, and, and learn about as we move forward. If you look at this, you can see that there's three columns on the top piece. One is our current budget this year. One is what we're proposing for next year. And the, and the next is an increase or decrease in a particular budget or budget line. It's broken up in salaries and benefits, equipment, supplies, contractual and cross contracts. Those are, those are contracts that we have with other BOCES for some services. Transfers to other budgets, okay? Ba basically what that means is we're our own customer. We spend money. If we use the services out of our uh, technology, bu technology programs, if we use the services out of professional development, we account for that because our revenues and our expenses have to balance in each and every budget and each and every program. So, you know, you'll see that line there, and that'll tell you how much we're buying from ourselves. Another piece of this that you might not see in this budget, but you'll see in others, is transfers from other budgets. So you can see the revenue stream that's coming into a particular program from BOCES itself to keep it solvent. If you're to look at this budget, you can see that our administrative budget overall is going to go over about, uh, go, it's going to increase by about $60,000. Some minor increases, and uh, I'd, I'd say uh, retiree health insurance is probably the moderate increase that you see there. Uh, it's, a, it's at least a third, okay? We have to account for our retiree health insurance in our administrative budget so that you know what we're spending on retiree health insurance from year to year, and that's a requirement of the state. If you go down, we take a little bit out of revenues for interest and for sale of property at auctions and things like that of 13000 Our budget increase on the administrative side is approximated at 3.7%. If you go down to the capital, the capital is the expense that we have when we lease space and put programs in different spaces. This year, uh, there's two, there are two big leases that are going to come off our books. One is the, one is the uh, West Genesee Street Mall. We rent space there for our CBO. The CBO will be moving to another building, our Center for Learning building on Allen Street. So that lease will be retired. There's another lease for our alternative program, Summer School, uh, Summit School, that's at the YMCA. We're gonna move that program and do a major shift in our alternative ed program and bring it all to campus. So that lease is going to retire. If you look at that overall, you know, you can see that there's a dip of about $120,000 in our capital. If you tie it all together, our administration and our capital, overall we're looking at a decrease of about 3%. Now that's all well and good, but what you want to know is what does that mean for Auburn, okay? These budgets are whacked up based on your Arwada population. It's the student count that you have based on where they are in programs, okay? A high school, a high school student will count as 1.25 in, in, in the count, and an um, elementary school student will count as a 1, and a, a kindergarten student will count as a 0.5. You pull it all together in the county, you know how many are yours, and then you, make the, you divide it and you divide the budget proportionally. As things are in the county, from last year to this year, we have lost uh, 371 students, okay? That might just mean that there's uh, more kids that graduated that came in, okay? A district who sees an increase might just mean sixth graders went to seventh grade and now they count as 1.25. There's no major shift whatsoever. <laughs> it's just the way it counts. It's a data piece. As far as, uh, as, far as um, Auburn is concerned, 
you're going to decrease by 143 students and student count and you will uh, benefit with a $19,000 reduction overall from last year to this year and a 3.01% decrease in your administrative and capital expenses from last year to 14-15. Okay? Any questions? Operations and maintenance. Next white one, okay? kind of funny how our operations and maintenance budget works. It works because we as BOCES programs pay for the square footage that we use in our programs so that we can subsidize our budget. This is not a budget that you'll see in a budget book or a part of a bill that you'll see coming here to Auburn because it's all tied to the expenses inside all of our other program budgets. If you look at this budget based on some shifting of staff, some retirements, we're looking at a decrease in salaries and benefits, some of it also due to a decrease in uh, health insurance, and we're looking at a 0.92% increase overall, an uh, increase of $19,225 from one year to the next. Any questions? Jeff, no questions? I do have a question. Operation and maintenance, when you talk about equipment, is that equipment mostly for the operations of the building? That doesn't talk about equipment that the students are using or fixing. That's more or less for the upkeeping of the BOCES? You know, Jeff, that's a great question. And what that boils down to is the equipment that we use in terms of our CTE program, some of it might be equipment that we don't use in our operation and maintenance and shift it in there. But typically, we're buying the most up-to-date equipment possible for our CTE students. And the equipment that's tied to this may not just be, you know, trucks and blowers and mowers and things like that. It could also be uh, spare parts and things that we need to keep our HVAC thing running. You know, uh, what we do is we try to keep, like anybody who's running an efficient operation, parts available so you don't have to go, over, uh, go out overnight them and you have them there so that it doesn't disrupt the educational environment as, you know, as much as it could if you didn't. So Larry's been doing a terrific job keeping things running well. Our staff is keeping our equipment in pretty good shape, and we're at the position where we have to update our equipment because if we don't, it costs us more to keep it up and fix it than it does, and, and it's down for a time where we have unproductive time we're better off keeping things running. So, uh, good question. CTE, career technical education. In a lot of ways, I mean, we've been out and done tours, and, and some people think that that's all BOCES does, is, is help to train kids in, uh, in some kind of uh, uh, craft or trade. But our CTE budget, our 101 budget, you can see that we're ha we have a significant decrease in that budget in salaries and benefits based on some staffing shifts, some retirements, and even some layoffs, okay? $193,000 decrease. Overall decrease in the budget of $141,000, which is a, uh, um, overall decrease in the budget of $141,000, which is a 2.92% decrease. And if you look to the bottom, you can see what the tuition is. Now there's something, I may have said this last year, but something pretty cool about the way we run our CTE budget. If you're in other places, sometimes, most times, what the BOCES does is they make adjustments as you enroll students. So you may look at your budget as you're building your budget in May, June, you know, and, and say, okay, now I know what our CTE costs are going to be for tuition. But September rolls around and all of a sudden there's 10 more kids that want to be in CTE that didn't really even consider it in the spring. So at 10 grand, grand a whack, you got 10 more kids, you got to find $100,000. So you either have to put it somewhere as a cushion or you have to find it. What we do at our BOCES is we base the tuition the following year on the student count of the current year. So this tuition in your student count is based on the students that were enrolled in November. Okay? That gives stability from year to year because you can see, if you look at this graph, there's a lot of volatility in terms of shifts of enrollment, okay? That gives you additional time to plan for, bless you, additional time to plan for uh, what the costs are going to be, okay? And know what your costs are going to be before you get into the budget season. 
It's a great tool for making sure that your expenses and your revenues are staying on an even keel and you don't have any big bumps or any big spikes. So we're pretty proud of that and it's a great tool for all. Next, 103. These should be the blue sheets, okay? These are our special ed budgets. Our 103 budget, our CTS budget has to do with a career technical support. These are technical programs for, geared towards special ed students that need additional staffing support and supervision. It's to give them workplace and uh, work-like uh, opportunities so that when they graduate, they have an opportunity to find some employment. Uh, you can see that there's a decrease in salaries and benefits here based on some, um, some uh, cuts with regards to uh, teacher aides and their benefits. Overall, we're looking at a 90,000, well, almost $91,000 decrease in the budget, which is 7.02% decrease in that budget, and the tuition decrease based on the 77 slots that were ordered in the initial uh, service request process of a decrease of 8.22%. 213, 1211 budget, special, special ed program, uh, geared to uh, more, even more supervision and kids who need even more help and more support. Um, you can see that again, there's a $76,000 decrease in that budget. But you can also see down in other contractual that there's $168,000, almost $169,000 increase. This is due to something that we thought was uh, appropriate a shifting of expenses that were carried into an, in another budget into the budget where they're actually spent these services are for ot and pt there's other services included in that line for speech and uh, uh, counseling and other, uh, other things that a student might need based on and what's driven by their iep however those costs those services are not tied to the tuition cost Okay, if you go down below, you can see what the tuition was for 2013, and then you can see what it's projected to be for 2014 15 based on our initial request. And you can see that it looks like there's going to be a shift up of $1,565 for our regular cost students and a minor shift of $63.26 for high cost students. It's not a significant increase overall in the budget, the increase is 3.11. But what I put in here is something that, um, sh to kind of show you what the tuition costs and what the services cost. You can see that the regular tuition and high cost tuition if added together, all multiplied out is about $4.6 million. And if you take that away from the budget of 4.9, it leaves you $258,699 for additional services that students might need based on their IEP. Does that make sense? When we initially do, did this, I confused about 30 people. When do you know, or how long ago, when, when do you determine how many students will be attending these, uh, the 1211, the 811? <clears throat> you get that from the this screen? Place? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's how it works. We do the initial request, okay? And the initial request pro process is in December, okay? You're trying to make a prediction based on a population that might be here in the district in September mm -hmm. and possibly even make a prediction on who might move in, in and above who you know today in your district as a population needs those services. Uh, uh, D Diane Muller-Bennett spends a lot of time with all the CSE chairs in terms of trying to fine tune what the estimate's going to be because it it wreaks havoc it wreaks havoc in our budget yeah. okay so when you have that havoc you want to get you want to control it a bit this is what's happened we have the initial requests that's all that's what we go from when we build our proposed budget so is that what these numbers are mm -hmm. the initial requests exactly so they'll change yep final requests will come in uh, final requests will come back to us in may they should be revised typically they're a little higher if the, if the request for students is higher and we have enough room without having to add staff, tuition should drop, okay? If they're lower, tuition should go up. But we won't know that till May. 
<coughs> and then there's the summer, and then there's September, and every other month after it. And sometimes you have to ch you have to chase lots around to make sure that you got the kids in the right place, and and, and there's places for them. But you will add staff if you need to to, to accommodate additional. We, we have to, yes. So but if that's the case, that could arrive. Yep. It comes through on the IP. We have to. But that will also, if we add staff, okay that will drive the the whole budget up and could increase tuition for everybody so it's a, it's a delicate you know it's really a moving target and it is all year long but the best thing to do is have something for people to go on uh, as as you're moving forward and building your budget here so is CTS the same situation mm-hmm yep and we do our best to end and so is the 811 the next budget kind of the same exact thing based on based on what we have 52 we you know county wide or BOCES wide it looks like 52 regular cost kids 38 uh, high cost kids and a shift the regular cost will only go up $82 a kid and the high cost will go up uh, $1,730 the overall increase in that budget is 1.23 percent I mean my recommendation as delicate as it is is that there is a very close uh, communication path with regards to students and tuition between the business office guy, guidance CSE and everybody else because these are these are big ticket mm -hmm. if you have five kids move in and they're high cost there's a quarter million dollars right there mm -hmm. you know and and you got to take care of them they're your kids when they walk in the door they're your kids and we got to take care of them and we're going to help you as best we can but you know sometimes you can't predict what's coming they're arguing over Larry and Jeff are arguing over how much snow we're going to get I mean you, you can't get down a anything okay I'm going to turn this over to Bill for the alternative budgets the alternative uh, budgets are purple okay and uh, we'll let him talk a little bit and then I'll come back and you okay, thank you. Um, we're going to start a little bit deeper in the packet. If, I, if you're in the purple area, go three pages in and you're going to find a fact sheet. Okay, and I'll give you a second to find that. Does everybody have that? Mm -hmm. Okay, as Peter mentioned before, <coughs> we are leaving the partnership that we've had for 30 years with the YMCA. It's not such a bad thing. We think that it's time and that we're going to be able to provide a brand new program that's very exciting for all. all for our alternative education students uh, housed right at the new center that we have. So what you have on the fact sheet at the top are the four programs that are currently operating. So we have a start high school academy, a start middle school academy, summit middle school, and summit high school academy. Going across, you can see that the two at the top, the start academies, are half day programs. Summit programs are full day. Moving forward, gives you the student count in each of those programs, tuition, and then final pro, uh, budget, budget uh, program budget, the last column to the right, for a combined total budget of those four current programs of $2 million. About two years ago, we started tracking very closely those tuition rates, and we said to ourselves, we just can't sustain these models at these rates of increases. Just couldn't do it. So we started two years ago looking at possible design structures, Part of it was leaving the YMCA, huge, co huge cost savings there that Peter talked to you that you will benefit in the administrative budget. That's about an $84,000 lease that will not be absorbed by these programs anymore. Uh, you can see that currently there's 110 students receiving services. Our new program that will be housed on the BOCES campus will provide services for 91 students. So a little bit slight reduction in service delivery but accommodating all of those students in a full day learning environment. That's a tremendous benefit. You can see up top there, there were a number of students just receiving half day programming, which is a tremendous benefit to the new model. 91 students, full day program, housed at our center. Moving over to the tuition line, you can see another significant advantage there. It's dropping the tuition rate to $14,000 per student before aid for a total budget for that program of 1.3 million. The difference being, coming down to the next, between where we currently are, where we propose to be, cost savings of 690,000 
$380, including the Y lease, another $89,000 for a total cost savings delivered to the district, $779,828 roughly. That's the money side of the thing. And we have to understand, you have to deal with the dollars and cents in this. But more excitingly is the program side, because I think we're, we're about to launch a very exciting new concept, new program at our site. First thing is, we're going to have a 712 model. It's going to be in Classroom East. It will be housed in the, in the entire classroom section of the east wing of the building. Some of, many of you have been there, probably all of you have been. That looks like a traditional school building. The benefit is that wing is connected to very exciting learning opportunities. So our students will, will be able to do some job shadowing, internship, without even having to put a coat on. They will simply be able to morph into the CTE, the 16 CTE programs that we currently have going with opportunities for 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th graders to be exposed to career technical education in a variety of formats. Uh, Natalie Scavone, Scavone and myself had an opportunity to speak with the administrative staff here at Auburn yesterday, and we spent about an hour with people explaining the new program. We're very, very excited about the opportunity. And please, uh, when you do have, a, have time in your board meeting, we would be happy to come back and spend a little bit more time in detailed discussion with you. But if you can, if you have the opportunity next October, please come to our open house meet the kids. They're the best. They will be explaining uh, a day in the week of their lives at the new program. So I'd invite you to do that. Any questions about that? No? We're good? Okay, thank you. Again, it, it should also be noted that you can't come up with $700,000 worth of savings without cutting staff. You guys are up against the same thing. You know how it works. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna lose probably nine positions on that shift. But we think it's best for kids. So it's gonna work out great. Um, high school equivalency. That coaster, that budget is uh, really not showing any increase at all. It's a decrease overall of 2.17. But with regards to lower enrollment, we're looking at an increase in tuition of anywhere from uh, $500 to $1,000 per slot. Any questions? You guys have to yell. Uh, these are pinks now, right? Pinks? Okay. Pinks are. About, excuse me. When we talked about high school equivalency, you're talking about the task, the new. Yes. Course. So that's all that's been changed. Yes. The program itself has been changed based on the new standard and prescribed uh, delivery and testing, yes. However, it's the same coaster, okay? It's hard. Have you looked at any of the questions? Mm -hmm. On that new test, it's pretty hard. It is hard. Very hard, difficult. Okay, coaster 508, this is instructional development. This is a, a coaster that's run by uh, Jessica Doctor. Has to do with the professional development and instructional development that's done either on site or through workshops that are delivered. Uh, <laughs> the staff of uh, three coaches um, put together about a schedule of 453 days. Uh, there's also uh, regional scoring tied to that uh, for state assessments and regional workshops that are tied to that as well. You can see that the budget is really fairly flat. But if you here's a good example. If you look at that 900 transfers from other budgets, we expect to use more services as an organization out of that budget. And we'll be increasing our costs from uh, 19,000 to uh, 20, almost 26,000. So uh, uh, we're paying our share. And that is going to show up in the other budgets that we've shown you. OK? So overall increase 0.73%. 511. 511 is what we call a school improvement coaster. It's the school curriculum coordination coaster. Again, Jessica Doctor uh, heads heads that department and that coaster. We're looking at uh, a major shift of six thousand five hundred twenty-two dollars, and an overall change in three point of three point three one percent in terms of an increase. Now, the interesting piece of this coaster is. Let's say you. Let's say the district has an initiative that they want to they, they want to follow as part of their strategy. 
want to bring in a speaker from the outside to make delivery to either you know the community the staff you know whoever it is for training or 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 or, or just basically uh, um, you know just basically a speech all right if the district was to hire that person to come in and talk to you you could do that you write a check and everybody has the benefit of the experience and then part ways and go your merry way the way this coaster works is it works in a way to try to establish some kind of perpetuity with regards to aid so the way it would work is people the administration here would say Jess, we want this person to come in and we want them to speak to our staff for three days and do some workshops over three days for our professional development throughout the year, okay? This is what it's going to cost. Can you put something together for us so that we can do it as cheaply as possible and drive aid? So Jess and I would talk. We'd get in communication with the person who's going to deliver it. They sign a contract with us. We pay them. We bill a district what we spend, the district pays us, they get billed with BOCES aid, and there's a chunk of money to do something like that again the next year, okay? That's how this coaster works. It's been working very well. Auburn takes great advantage of it, and uh, it, it helps create some additional seed money and revenue outside of the taxpayers' pockets, so it's a great opportunity. Yellow guys, okay, these are technology budgets. Jeff, am I going fast enough? Wow. Okay, good, thanks. Uh, distance learning video conferencing budget. All nine uh, component school districts participate in this. This really has to do with the infrastructure of delivering uh, instruction um, via video conference, whether it's uh, actual uh, lectures to field trips, okay? Very minor budget. I mean, it's about $50,000 overall. And it's a $362 uh, increase to districts, which is a 1.01% overall. If you go to the next, okay, the 450-100, this is the e-learning budget, and this takes into account uh, distance learning opportunities with regards to, uh, um, uh, it has taken over this is the one that takes, has taken over from the BAP grant, correct? Yeah. Okay. The BAP grant is a grant that was offered to the four contiguous BOCES here, TST, uh, Cugon, Daga, OCM, and Oswego, to put together uh, online learning opportunities for AP courses for students in the area throughout the four BOCES. The VAP grant and the funding is, has basically disappeared for next year. So the four component, the four BOCES have said, we still have districts that like the idea and want to continue with this, uh, put a program together. So this has to do with the staffing and support of that particular program, okay? We didn't have it last year, so there's nothing to compare it to. But we're looking at the staffing support being about $125,000. The process itself is set up so that districts order into, into the uh, service and then order courses for their students as the year progresses, okay? Students can take either full credit or half credit courses. They can take it for advanced placement or just, you know, just to take it as an elective. Um, we expect that about 25 districts of the four uh, compiled BOCES will participate in this program as it stands right now. Next, ISS services. This has to do with support of ISS functions uh, throughout the nine districts. It has to do with our own organizational support. Some services are provided to districts, whether it has to do with communication, assistive technology, or even consultant fees to work on special projects. Uh, we have other access to services like uh, uh, training, mobile device management, and storage and backup. <laughs> Overall, if you look at it, the budget itself is uh, $724,000. BOCES uses or is proposing to use about $221,000 of that service itself next year. So we're looking at only an increase that's going to be uh, sent out to districts of $12,568, which is a 2.56% increase overall. Any questions? 
503, duplication and copy service. How much, how many trees do we kill tonight, huh? There's paper <laughs> flying around everywhere. Uh, we still have to do, uh, no matter how wire, no matter how paperless we want to get, we still got to take care of paper. Uh, this is based on orders from the district and the staffing for those orders. Uh, it's about a th almost a three quarter of a million dollar budget at $729,000. Uh, we use it ourselves, so $35,000 of it is our BOCES. Uh, we're looking at an overall increase to districts of $11,766, which is a 1.72% increase. Okay. 550. Okay, this has to do with learning technologies. It has to do with the infrastructure, which requires network and fiber and everything needed to be tied to other places. It also has uh, uh, tied to it uh, contracts and software through Project Lead the Way, Brain Pop, credit recovery platforms, as well as uh, the Oasis product that's put together to track things for your uh, APPR. Overall, the budget's going to go up $18,643. Most of that is going to be taken over by BOCES, so it leaves the districts a $1,101 increase, which is a 0.18%. The other piece of the 550 budget is something that uh, uh, administrators and uh, building leaders ha at the secondary level at least have been exposed to over the past couple months. This Brain Honey project that has to do with tying Common Core curriculum mapping and web delivery of instruction on a web-based platform and the ability to flip a classroom. You guys have heard of a flip classroom where actual instructional delivery is done outside of school or in another area other than the classroom and the kids come into the classroom and apply it on project-based learning or in other area in other ways of creating experience and engagement as opposed to sitting and listening to a chalk and talk lecture or something that's happening in the classroom it's a new product new concept new strategy uh, we're seeing uh, at least four school districts that are, uh, have signed on to this and want to use it. Uh, overall, it's about $25,000 for the infrastructure and support. And it's something that's pretty exciting and we're going to be moving on next year. So these are the budgets that we put together that we could present to all nine boards based on their participation. You know BOCES. There's 80 bazillion budgets of BOCES. And if there's some that are used in one particular district or another, there's more intimate conversations that are had in terms of what people need and what they're going to cost and how they're going to impact your budget. Our mission today really was to come in to thank you for your support, thank you for the opportunity to explain things, okay, and also show you, number one, the transparency that we're trying to create with regards to our finances. Number two, the fact that we know what you're doing. We know what you got to do. We know how hard it is. Cutting programs is tough. Keeping things to 1%, 2%, most of these budgets, we've done it, okay? And we know what you're up against. So we feel your pain and we're walking the talk. And then lastly, if you have a question, the invitation is always there, no matter what it is to come to us and we will share with you as best we can the information you seek so that you're more comfortable with our relationship. That's really why we're here. Okay, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a couple closing remarks again. Thank you for the invitation. Peter did a nice job of uh, walking you through some very complex material. The team behind us, our directors and principals were critical in making these numbers work for us. Based on 11 position cuts this year at BOCES, which brings us to total cuts since 2008 of 70 positions. I say that to you because you know exactly what that feels like. I believe Auburn's in the area of 90 plus, if I'm, if I'm correct. It's a, it's a tough thing to do, but our charge is to try to cope with this extremely challenging financial uh, situation that we're in. I want to thank, let's see, Jeff spent some time, Lisa, 
Camille, Connie, we've all been active both locally and in Albany doing our best to get restoration of this thing called gap elimination adjustment. Once we get that victory behind us, we're going to move on to doing something with this thing called Foundation Aid mm -hmm. to, bring, to bring equity. Um, all of the players here at Auburn that have been active in Albany have been very clear with the recalibration, redesignation of Auburn. I know Lisa and I spent some time with uh, Mr. Saberla, spent some time with Mr. Flanagan. Connie, you've been very active locally and in Albany, so best wishes for that. I think that's going to happen for Auburn, my hope is. Um, so we're going to try to get through this all together. As Peter said, if you have further questions, do not be shy. He mentioned the party. That is our annual dinner. It's scheduled for April 10th. We'll begin at 6 o'clock. I believe invitations have been extended. Please join us. We will be a little bit more brief that night, and the food will be outstanding. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is pretty brief tonight. Um, just kind of bring you up to date on where we are with the numbers and uh, um, our revised budget assumptions, uh, what we're looking at right now. So we still are, are assuming the 1.45% property tax increase, which is our tax levy limit. Um, our state aid, for now, we are we are assuming that we'll receive 1.5 million um, additional aid in, in addition to what's been proposed in the governor's budget um, because if the same formula is used for the gap elimination restoration is used this year, the same formula next year that was used this year, going through the calculations, mm -hmm. that would be about $1.5 million additional aid. So. Assuming that, you know, we've been told by the Senate that they that will be included in their budget bill. Um, we're hopeful that the assembly will include it in theirs as well and that it will be in the final budget. Um, and that's not to say that there couldn't be other aid, you know, if they do something with foundation aid, maybe we'll see some other increases, but we are um, right now including one and a half million. Um, we continue to plan the use of our reserves that we've talked about and we were approved last summer. We do, um, we are adding now five additional aids and this is as a result of all the CSE hearings, um, committee work. Uh, we have one additional elementary classroom teacher due to enrollment projections, we've talked about that. Um, we have a 0 .4 FTE where we want to increase a 0 .6 FTE at the high school to a full-time 1.0, so that's a 0 .4 FTE increase for the college and career readiness program. I, I think that I should add uh, that in terms of uh, really uh, attacking the region's reform agenda in this district, we've done a very good job with that. Our teachers have been working very hard to ensure that our curriculum is aligned with the Common Core Learning Standards. And part of those standards do include um, district's responsibility to ensure that students are both college and career ready. And so one of the programs that we're looking at in our partnership with Partnership for Education and Business is a cooperative education program, which we're still uh, envisioning and working with high school staff uh, to build uh, the structure for. Uh, and uh, the other piece I'm going to ask Leela to talk about in terms of promoting access uh, to coursework at the high school that will help bridge the gap, the transition from high school to college. Yeah, we discussed this at our curriculum and instruction uh, committee meeting last night, but the CCC has a, a course, two semesters, called Foundations for College Success, and uh, I think Dia knows more about it than I do, actually. <laughs> But uh, it, the idea is that we would prepare kids with study skills like things that they might need uh, to be successful in college. And so um, we would like to be able to offer that um, minimally in one semester, but preferably in two semesters, two sections of it, which would account for that um, increase. But we're also kind of sorting that with the uh, coordination of this um, pilot uh, cooperative education. Uh, we're also assuming the movement of the ESL program, moving that back from BOCES uh, in-house. 
the increase in our the TRS contribution rate that's a 7.9 percent increase in the amount that the district contributes to the um, retirement system uh, transportation contract we've come to final terms on that we'll be bringing that to the board um, we're looking at an 8.6 percent increase which is down from 16 and a half percent that we initially um, had received and then just minimal increases in in other expense lines in the budget the three components of the budget um, we this is what we reviewed the last couple of board meetings and these are the, the three um, program capital and administrative components that are required by SED um, and how we compare 1415 to our current year um, percentages are, are pretty uh, constant the administrative portion is still 10.9 percent the capital uh, portion has gone down a little bit because one of our debt payments um, from I think a 2002 bonding has been paid off so that will will drop off next year and so the program percentage is up a little bit so where that gets us now our estimated revenues and this is not including any of our use of reserves or fund balance is at 67.2 million in our appropriations it's the same as the number on the previous page at 71.2 million leaving us with a, a shortfall of four million dollars so the options to close that shortfall are always um, appropriating our fund balance or reserves um, additional state aid or if there was any other additional revenue sources um, reducing appropriations and one that's not up there that we could talk about a little bit is tax increase uh, higher than the tax levy limit now I want to go over that um, through the tax levy limit with you and what it would look like and we've been over this every year um, it's a pretty complicated formula a lot of it is well it's all set in stone by the state but um, there are some some ambiguous I guess areas um, we start with last year's tax levy we add a growth factor to it that New York State tells us that kind of takes into allowance any new construction in your area and so every every area in the state has a different growth factor and ours is just 1.0 so that basically means there was no no significant um, construction so we to that number we add the prior year pilot revenue payment in lieu of tax revenue and we subtract out the prior year capital tax levy which is the local share of all of our debt payments anything that's not covered by um, state building aid then to that number we add the levy growth factor this is where the the two percent misnomer comes in it's two percent of the consumer price index it's two percent or the consumer price index whichever is lower and this year the CPI only increased 1.46 percent so that is our growth factor this year then to that number we have to subtract expected pilot revenue for 14-15 and we can add back any exclusions um, we have a capital exclusion which is again the local share of debt for next year's budget and typically there is an exclusion for pension if the pension percentages are going up more than two percent which the the ERS uh, pension contribution rate actually went down a little bit from 20.9 percent to 20.1 percent I believe and the TRS is going up from 16.25 to 17.53 so it's less than two percentage points so we we don't get any exclusion this year um, so that basically uh, brings us down to our 29 million dollar allowable tax levy which is a 1.45 percent increase that's the most that we can increase it with just a simple majority approval of the voters so this is what our um, tax increase will look like translate into um, dollar amounts for the taxpayers um, on so various um, 
assessed values of houses or properties, a $50,000 um, home with a basic star exemption would see a $2.45 increase at the 1.45% tax levy. So um, typically we look at things in terms of a $100,000 house, just to make the numbers easy, I think. Um, so a, a house with a no star exemption would see a $27 increase. Uh, if you, there's a basic star, it's $16 increase, and a senior citizen with an enhanced star exemption would see about a $6 increase. Now, if we look at that um, tax increase and use 2.45%, for example, you could see the difference in um, what that would do for the $100,000 home, a $45 increase with no star, $34 with the basic star, and $24 increase with the enhanced star. So the, um, in the governor's proposal, there is a uh, rebate program for property owners um, that live in municipalities or jurisdictions that don't exceed the property tax limit. So for, our, for us, if we don't increase our tax levy by more than 1.45%, taxpayers will, could see a rebate from the state um, for the amount that their taxes went up. So on a $100,000 house, a person with a basic star exemption would see a $17 or a $16 tax increase. That's the amount that they could expect to see refunded from the state that that's the result of the the governor's program if that's enacted is that just for um school though or is it for it's for all municipalities so, so that's what they could get for the school then they could get something different for the county or okay, the city but it's not they're not all tied they don't all have to be under it's just they're separate all the details aren't we're not really so clear not on sure but we've been that. well we have been told that it's each jurisdiction is separate so how the state would administer that I I seems like that would be a nightmare but that's what we're being told that that's the way it's supposed to work well, well do you have an idea when that'll be finalized after the budget's adopted so hopefully by the end of the month so there you know that's the incentive to to get your local governments not to exceed the tax levy is that the property owners will see these rebate checks but it's it's not a huge windfall so where that leaves us now starting with the four million dollar um, shortfall we if we build in the one and a half million dollars in additional state aid that we are very hopeful to receive um, and we use the reserves that we've we've talked about uh, 1.57 million that gets our shortfall down to 931,000 and we would um, recommend using the fund balance for that using those assumptions um, I did a three-year projection and so our, our total revenues 71.2 million that's including the fund balance and the reserves and assuming that we get the additional one and a half million from the state, that would give us a balanced budget. Um, revenues equal expenses for next year. Mm -hmm. But then going out to 15, 16, and 16, 17, assuming <coughs> just, um, I think I uh, used two or three percent increases for salaries. I used just a two percent tax increase levy. Um, basic state aid increases <coughs> we still are looking at deficits of almost 2.3 million in 1516 and over 4 million in 1617 Lisa I might have missed out on a slide but at the 1.45 how much does that equate to that the taxpayers would be contributing to the budget what is that 1.45 percent um the tax levy would go from 28.6 to 29 so it's only it's about a four hundred thousand dollar increase in the tax levy 
And to your understanding at this point, realizing that it's early, the state's plan is to rebate individual property. Wouldn't it be easier for the state for us to simply freeze the tax rate and have the state pay the district one check of four hundred thousand dollars? Yeah, that that's what um hold the tax limit at where it is now. Pass the budget with a one point four five percent. Our levy goes up four hundred thousand. The state writes one check to us mm -hmm. for four hundred. It's going to cost them more than two dollars and forty five cents to locate and rebate. That two dollars and forty-five cents, and there's a lot yeah. of houses in Auburn that are probably assessed at fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and, and Nisba is actually um, recommending that they've come out with a recommendation to do exactly that. It, it just seems total, really unwieldy for the state to to manage that kind of a, a rebate program. And that's their plan, as you understand. Really, that's that, what, that's, that's what, what we were told in Albany. Right, Senator Flanagan's office told us that. So we will um, bring, when we get the state aid figures, we're still um, planning, assuming a, an on-time state budget. Um, so either if we have them in time, I'll, we'll bring our final recommendations to the March 25th meeting, or if not, to the April 8th meeting. And then we'll ask you to vote on the budget, either the 8th or the 23rd of April. And we'll mail out our newsletters in May, have the budget uh, budget hearing on May 13th and the vote on the 20th. What, <clears throat> what changes if we go to a 2.45% tax? Does that, that change anything or does it just change what we take out of reserves? <clears throat> it reduces what we take out of reserves. It would, it would only reduce what we took out of fund balance. Fund balance, yeah. And we would lose the rebate option to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. I'm just is it real that this this rebate option is going to happen? I mean, that's really the question. If it's not going to happen, what difference does it make in the long run anyway? I mean, it's it's kind of a, a crazy scheme anyway. I don't know how much of a difference it makes to individual taxpayers. It, it's not a large dollar amount, but the the notion of it, the the meaning behind it. Here's my other question. What difference does it make compounded yearly over a 10-year time period, 1%? Okay, if we hold back for 1% asking for that tax levy over time, what does that, what is, what is that cost to us? Because really when we don't raise the tax levy this year, it just compounds it in a negative fashion for next year, right, and the next year after that, and the next year after that. So, so, you know, what what does it do? How long in the future does it tie our hands? Well, it hasn't. It will have an impact forever. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. It will have an impact forever. There's, there's, you know, it's kind of like this half life situation. So, so my question to you is, I have absolutely no idea how to do it. I suppose I could figure it out, but. But what is what is that compounded over ten years? What is the loss for the school district of a one percent savings in our tax levy? You know that that's yes. a huge question for me because because that means that we're suffering this loss over long periods of time, and it, it amounts to much more than the the one percent. And I think that that we're suffering that compounding mm -hmm. of of not increasing the tax levy enough from 10 years ago and 15 years ago at this point in time, mm -hmm. as well as all of this stuff that's coming from the state. Right, and so I, I mean, it's it's a 1% increase in the levy is like 285,000. Right. So, so I mean, what it's at least 2.8 million plus the whole compounding effect right. yeah, over 10 years. I can, I can do that. Lisa, thank, thank you. You were projecting out this slide before this, I think it was the next two years, okay. Um, my question, I mean, I, I know, you know, we keep dipping in the reserves and stuff like that, but I, I got a voice and opinion here. I'm very concerned about how we can do this and projecting that and when's the well going to run dry? Well, that's, that's what's reflected in the, those deficit figures is next year, 14, 15, we use one and a half million in reserves. We use 900,000 of fund balance. Then in 15, 16, 
I'm only projecting to use 500,000 of reserves and 300,000 of fund balance. So that's why you're seeing the deficit. There's already the drop that we don't have the reserves and fund balance to use. And then going out the third year, I'm not projecting any use of reserves or fund balance. So that's why you see the $4 million deficit. And that's because under the current structure, that may very well be gone. Correct. If you know, I, I, hopefully we won't. I'm being conservative. I, most likely we would, we would be using less than what we project because we are a little conservative. Um, so hopefully we would have some rollover money from year to year, but I'm not counting on it. Right, and we're, we're using the 1.5 million that we saved last summer, that we're using all of that to reduce this year's gap. Most of it, we had. Except, well, for, yeah. what are you leaving that 300? We had, um, yeah, we had a 1.8 surplus. We put 1.8 in, yep. okay. Because I'm, I would wager that the 17, 18 numbers don't look any better. No, they would. They're going to continue course. to go up and up and up, and we're out of money. I don't know how, well, one year at a time, but I don't know how we close a $6.4 million budget gap in two years with no fund balance, with no reserves. I don't either. I don't know how we do that. Well, one thing's for sure. I mean, we, we got lucky with that supermajority uh, tax increase that we did the last time. But I don't think you're going to see it yeah. two times in a row. The, the taxpayers were very good to us. Very understanding. I don't think we would, but, you, but that's not that's not a number that we that's not a number that we can realistically tax our way out of. At two hundred eighty thousand dollars for each one percent, yeah, a, a four. So that's ten percent. It takes four a little four percent is about a million dollars. Yeah. Well, we're not proposing a sixteen percent tax increase. Well, would this. Any other comments or questions? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Lisa. on items pertaining to the education and or operation of school district. There will be time to write down the agenda at this point. Any resident wishing to address the Board of Education is requested to come forward to the lectern on being recognized and to give his or her name and address. Questions related to the employees of the district will not be permitted. Such questions should be referred to the superintendent at another time. Residents have been asked to sign in at the lectern and limit their presentation to three minutes or less. Do we have any residents this evening wishing to be heard? Any residents? Okay, thank you. 6.0, committee reports, workshops, meetings. 6.1, report on long-range planning committee meeting held on February 27, 2014. Ms. Carvajal, Mrs. Rowe, Mr. Dobby, and Mrs. Rhodes. <laughs> okay, um, we discussed um, our interest in looking at our um, music program. We discussed that it was a long-term um, proposition to really take a look at, um, at that overall. Um, we discussed the possibility of an innovation zone with regard to um, the music program and professional development surrounding um, that and, and help me out here and, and um, soliciting the, um, the input of our music department, certainly. So that was discussed. We discussed the, um, the Entering K program for Genesee Elementary School. We discussed, discussed the possibilities of energy efficiency programs. Um, we had a report that um, wind energy at this point in time was not feasible, but we would still look into solar energy um, plans off into the future. And we are planning a board workshop for next Tuesday night um, to include some um, space issues, um, budget analysis, um, budget priorities um, and that's what we talked about 
<laughs> Any additions? Anyone else? Thank you. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Report. 6.1.1 minutes of long range planning committee meeting. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Moved by Andy. Seconded by Dia. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain carried. <coughs> 6.2, report on facilities committee meeting held on March 5th, 2014. Mr. Andre, Mr. Giacomo, Mr. Rogers, and Mr. Um, we met, it was kind of a short meeting. We basically went over the progress on the uh, capital project, and um, uh, Larry uh, brought us up to date on what's going on. Um, things at the high school are progressing nicely, and they're getting pretty much complete. They're going through, they're still doing the, the uh, uh, checklist, uh, punch list, I should say. Um, and it takes a while, and, and I appreciate everybody's patience on this, but until that's completed, I can't really give you much more information than I'm giving you. Uh, Larry Larry is also going to be taking pictures of some of the progress. I think he's already begun that um, uh, in various buildings for those people who cannot take part in a tour that we're going to eventually get to. And um, we also uh, talked about, I guess, Jim Ocott during the break uh, did the uh, survey up at Auburn Junior High School and, and uh, came up with some figures for uh, energy performance contract. Again, it will save the district uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. So in the past, that's been very uh, beneficial to us. So. Um, that's what's what's coming at this point, um, and we'll be keeping in touch with you. Thank you. 6.2.1, Minutes of Facilities Committee meeting. Do I have a motion? Move. Moved by Michael. Second. Seconded by Andy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain carried. 6.3, Future Topics at Board Meetings. Does anyone have some future topics that they would like to have included on the agenda? Um, you know, always, you know, we have one or two more meetings just to continue to look at budget numbers. Um, you know, Lisa, if you could show us maybe like a 2.45, a 3.0, maybe something along those lines, um, just so we can see what those numbers would look like. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I would appreciate that too, because if we don't, if it ends up that the state cans that idea of the rebate and we don't have to um, deal with that political nightmare, um, I, I would like to consider, um, um, you know, looking at other other options. We still have to keep in mind the supermajority. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I'm not terribly afraid of a supermajority. I think that if we can make the case and that we have good rationale and we, we include the public in the conversation, I think it becomes, um, it becomes an option, a viable option for us. I don't think that we should be afraid of the supermajority. In fact, we should embrace it. The more people who, who want to do, um, do things for education, you know, the better off we are. And if, that ten, if that's you know, our recommendation, then, then um, we also need to um, get the support for that recommendation. It's part of what we do. Have we discussed a budget? Uh workshop anywhere at one of the schools like we've done in the past? Um, I think we're going to talk about That's budget Tuesday. next Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Any future topics? Okay. Thank you. Dates to remember? Um, I have a few things for dates to remember. Uh, two new ones and then I'd like to speak about one. Wonder, can you guess what one? <laughs> Um, this Thursday evening at 6 o'clock, the City Council meeting, Auburn City Council meeting, we received a letter last evening via email from Councilor Terry Cuddy that the Auburn City Council has put together a resolution that they are sending on to the state legislators in support of additional educational funds, in um, particular for our district, but all district. Um, it was kind of their way of, of helping us and, you know, a mutual goal of continuing to improve what's best for our community and for our children. So we very much appreciate that. Uh, thank you to the Auburn City Council for that. They have invited us to come to the board, uh, council meeting um, Thursday night at 6 o'clock for the reading of that resolution. So I, Kathy has already committed that she would be there. I will be there. And if anyone else could make it, please um, be at City Hall Thursday night at 6. 
Also, um, Bill Speck just told us this evening, April 10th is the BOCES annual dinner. Please put that one on your calendar. And then Saturday, March 22nd, Odyssey of the Mind competition. This is my favorite thing to talk about. I look forward to this every year. If you have never been to the Odyssey of the Mind competition, I encourage you please to attend. Odyssey of the Mind is a program that falls under TAG, which is the Talented and Gifted program that we have. It's a program that consists of a team member of seven students beginning in fourth grade up through the high school. This year, Auburn has six teams, um, Auburn High School, Seward, Owasco, Genesee, and Herman are all buildings that are being represented this year. Um, these team members start in October. They work right up until the day before of March 22nd. There's two parts to it. There is the long-term problem, which is the part that you get to see. It is a skit that the kids have put together. They build their own sets. They make their own costumes. They work extremely hard on this. Um, it's wonderful to see. It's a lot of excitement. It's costumes. It's kids are very excited. It's just a fantastic program. Um, I ask you, please, if you have time that day, to come out and support Auburn and all the other school districts for that competition. Starts at 8.30 in the morning. The programs, the skits are usually over by about 1 o'clock. The other part is called the spontaneous problem, which is not, you do not get to see, um, only the students get to do, participate in that. And then the award ceremonies start at 3.30 in the afternoon. But if you have time, please come out on that day and support the Auburn students. Thank you. Um, Carol, we have to set an audit committee um, meeting. Okay. We have a lot of stuff on our agenda. We've kind of been waiting for Mike. Um, we have to review um, the policy that, that I asked it to for the audit committee to review. Um, there was actually one, maybe two policies. Um, we have external auditor um, um, RFPs or uh, proposals to go through, and one of the vendors who um, who sent in a proposal requested to um, to speak with us. So it might be two audit committee meetings. Um, um, so what works? Michael and, and um, Eli. Okay, Sooner yeah. is better than later. Um, Next Monday? No. No, St. Patrick's Day? No. <laughs> <laughs> McCall? <Sure. laughs> we can meet in Coleman's in Syracuse. No. Um, we could, um, or we could do it. Uh, the 18th is our 6 to 8 workshop. We could do 5. No? Okay, what about Wednesday the 19th? Which Before you go pasta. to the junior class, uh, which is the pasta, pasta dinner. dinner. <laughs> you could bring it there. <laughs> I'm okay with the 19th if it works for you. Um, I have no. a conflict on the meeting. Okay. How about the 20th? How about Monday the 24th? Yep. Are you okay the 20th? I'm okay the 20th. I'm okay the 20th. What day we'll do that's Thursday? Just Thursday. Yep. Six o'clock? Yes, please. Um, Can I, you get here I, by six or is 6.30 better for you? Uh, we have a state visit, so it's going to be later. I was just going to say, I, I know there's a parent engagement meeting, but you can just meet in a different room at, oh, yeah. at the at Tubman Building. You just can't have the boardroom. Actually, the 24th room. actually works much better for me. Okay. okay. No board. Monday the 20th. You, you can't do it. Okay. All right, the 20th. 7? 6.30 or 7? Seven? 7, please. 7, okay. Okay. Thursday, March 20th, 7 p.m., audit committee meeting. Thank you. Where are we going, Tubman? Yes. Before we move on to the next part of the agenda, if you don't mind, um, mm -hmm. I think it's important to acknowledge uh, the efforts of the Board of Education in meeting with local legislators. This is an ongoing effort, and we just want to um, assure you that we appreciate those efforts. I also want to mention that Cheryl Miskell came with us uh, to Senator DeFrancisco's office. Thank you, Cheryl, for continuing to partner with us uh, in ensuring that we uh, gain equitable access to state resources. And I also think it's important that we talk about uh, what principals and educators are doing within their buildings. They have really taken up the charge with earnest in terms of making sure that they're writing those postcards uh, to our local legislators and to the governor's office uh, so that Auburn is, Auburn's plight is, is heard loud and clear. And so I just, again, 
want to acknowledge the efforts of all of uh, the stakeholders in the district um, uh, to, to close this uh, financial gap that uh, we have seen in Auburn for many, many years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 7.0, old business, 7.1, approved stipulation of settlement. Do I have a motion? Uh, Moved by Amanda. Second. Seconded by Michael. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Staying carried? 7.2, amend policy 6470, staff use of computerized information resources. This is a second reading. Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved by Andy. Second. second. Seconded by Kathy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 7.3. Amend policy 1332. Duties of the school district treasurer, deputy treasurer. This is a second reading. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved by Kathy. Second. Seconded by Eli. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 7.4. Amend policy 5110, budget planning and development. This is a second reading. Do I have a motion? Uh, Moved by Amanda. Second. Seconded by Kathy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 7.5. Amend policy 5120, school district budget hearing. This is a second reading. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Eli. Second. Seconded by Kathy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 7.6. Amend policy 1140. Student liaison to the Board of Education. This is a second reading. Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved by Sam. Second. Seconded by Andy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 8.0. Financial matters. 8.1. Memorandum of, of agreement and annual professional performance review plan. Auburn Administrators Association. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Dia. Second. Seconded by Kathy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? 8.2. Budget transfer. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Amanda. Second. Seconded by Eli. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? At this point, the board will consider whether to proceed with the consent agenda for items 9.0 and 12.2. Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved by Sam. Seconded by Kathy. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carried? Adjourn that. Thank you very much, everyone.